Uh, welcome to Tango Log. Uh, this is number three. Um, and it's almost midnight here in Buenos Aires. Um, I had planned to broadcast uh, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 6 p.m. So I'm very happy to announce that everything is going according to plan. Anyways, um, so well, I'm also happy to announce that I have um, received a couple of suggestions that I would like to um, speak about first today. So um, this is from a friend of mine, and so um, he asked, like, um, so what do tango classes look like in general, and what is technically common between all of them, so between the different teachers? Um, and I thought that was a really interesting question because, um, well, you know, as I, I mentioned before, like, here in the past six years in Buenos Aires, I've had the chance to take a lot of classes, and I started making a list, and it's been um, over 50 great teachers that I had the chance to learn from, or at least take at least one class, either group class or private, or some sort of combination, um, but I, you know, to have contact and in-person contact to see um, what goes on behind their dance and how they explain things. I mean, I feel really lucky. Um, and in terms of um, what is technically common between all of them, actually it's um, the specific technique that is often um, precisely what's different between each of the teachers. So it's whether it's, oh, a straight leg or a bent leg or the heel or toe, like a specific technique is exactly what's different between each, uh, each dancer. Um, so in terms of what's actually in common, between all of them, like what I think is that each one has put in their time and energy and focus into developing a dance that works for them personally. So they've been able to find what feels comfortable for them and what lets them um, find pleasure in the tango dance. And um, to be able to create something in conjunction with another person, their, their dance partner. So that is um, basically what's in common, like it's put in that time and usually Actually, I, I, I also think that maybe what difference is between what you see a teacher and, and, and where you are now is that is the time that one has put in. So also, this leads into this whole project, so it's like I would like to um, put in some sort of dedicated, regularly scheduled, well, it's supposed to be regularly scheduled, but anyways, it'll, it'll be regularized, but anyways, um, some sort of practice and time to see um, what kind of difference that makes. So anyways, I also wanted to say, this is why I have my lovely script here, because I'm also forgetting what I wanted to say in response to this lovely suggestion. But anyways, so yeah, so basically technique are, are just the tools, right? I mean, so it's what you want to create and um, what you use the, to the tools for that are important. So, you know, if you go to a teacher and they have their technique, I mean, these are the tools that, that, work, that works for them and allows them to say what they want to say in the tango. Um, and... So that's the response to that question. So hopefully, you know, by looking at what I found in common is that um, the time and um, uh, dedicating enough time so that you have the, the tools that you want to be able to execute something that that inspires, uh, that is inspired by the essence of tango in, in yourself and to be able to enjoy that whole process as you're going through that moment of um, tango bliss that, that we all look for, right? Anyway. So, um, and also, well actually, I actually do have the intention to talk about things that are commonly said, uh, more specifically, like I've mentioned a couple already, which is such as like, collect your knees, or don't move um, your shoulders, or don't move something, you know? Um, and I've tried to um, analyze what's, um, what I think is mis misunderstood about them. So sometimes, um, well I tend to do that, right? I, I hear something from a teacher, and I tend to take it to the extreme, it ends up being completely, um, maybe mal, uh, mal interpretado, uh, misinterpreted. And um, so I do want to, um, each set, in each session when the topic comes up, to maybe mention things I've heard lots of different teachers say, um, but then it's often misunderstood, or what I think is maybe teachers are trying to get at the same thing, and they say it in different words. So anyway, that's the um, first question. Long answer, which I'm not going to repeat in Spanish because I think it'll take up too long, but I'll try to translate and write it afterwards. And so the second question was um, asking for a quick routine 
um, that a girl can practice to remember and practice all day at home. Well, I mean, this is kind of the idea. If I had a routine already <laughs> and had the discipline to form one and do it all day, I probably would be dancing better than I am now. So hopefully at the end of this process, um, not the end, sorry, after about a month, I hope to be able to have something to summarize and, and maybe put together a new routine in a more organized fashion. But right now, so far, um, I think the past two sessions, I've talked about the hips and then the little toe and then this little magic spot here, uh, which works for me, uh, around the knees. And so we're gonna stick to the lower body today and then um, talk specifically about the little toe. So, so without any further ado, let's uh, get moving a little bit. <laughs> obsessing about a little bit because a lot of people talk about uh, different parts of the foot and um, this little toe really kind of helps me control the whole foot without being turned in. Uh, let's see if I can <laughs> try to show my feet here. Okay, so what am I trying to do with the little toe? By putting the flower there, 
you say yes i think so so by putting the flower there i'm trying to oops there we go uh, i'm trying to open the little toe so this is common in like contemporary dance too well i suppose maybe in ballet but i really don't know anything about ballet i do go to uh, a couple of contemporary dance teachers and they always tell me to open my feet so does this look horrible? Oh my gosh. Well, anyways, okay, too late now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, bueno, en español lo puedo decir. Ya llegó invierno y estoy en remera y en patas, así que. Um, bueno, no, never mind. Uh, anyway, so the point is um, that the little toe has to go outwards. Uh, so from, from the top on. So m many of us dance like with the toes like this, right? And usually when you go onto your, your heels, this, this happens, like that all, all your toes are scrunched here, can you see? And so really, um, I was trying to do a releve, like um, exercises where my dance teacher, uh, Paolo Fontan, the other day on Tuesdays, um, she teaches contemporary and stretching classes. Um, so, so for at the end of some exercises, I had to go up on, on releve, right? So wow, this is good training for heels. But anyways, so what was going on is like when I went up, um, she wanted my toes to be out. And also when I'm going down, um, to have the toes stay stay firm. Otherwise, this, this thing happens, right? Can you, can you see this thing happens? So, um, yeah, basically, before I could always move my little toe, yes, I'm moving my little toe. And in the left foot, it's a little bit harder. Um, it makes a big difference, right? Like really you think, okay, I'm dancing tango and you know, I should just feel the music and entregarme y surrender and all that, but really, you know, if, if your feet aren't active and um, disponible as a tool, like, um, and available as a tool for you to use, you're really limited in, in what you can um, express. So basically, I mean, obsessing about whether, there you go, I'm gonna help it out. I hope uh, assessing about the little toe maybe seems a little crazy, but it it makes a difference when you're dancing and how you can feel in, uh, the connection with your partner, how how you um, can operate your own body. So anyways, so I don't know. Okay, let's try from the ground. Okay, does this look a little crazy? Oh my gosh, my foot can be close. Anyways, yeah. So what I think about the releve. So if you go up, right? I mean, if somebody has some amazing feet uh, who's watching this, uh, please post something that's better than this because my feet, um, well, I started working on them like only about starting six years ago and, and not very diligently either, either. So anyways, so the whole point is to have the little toe be a point of support. Duke and Duke. So from this angle should be like this. So what I tended to do was have the little toe bend. You see this? Like have it... Uh, give in as it goes down, especially in the left foot. I mean, I'm showing with the right foot, which is, so there's the left foot. See, my little toe doesn't really respond. There we go. It should go that way. Duke, and it should go down, right? Yeah, there we go. So I'm trying to have it not go like, like be smashed. I'm trying to have it be, be there. And in the shoe, it would be, I guess here's the tank. This is actually my oldest pair of shoes, but you can see the toes back here. So what I'm trying to say is that when you're stepping in tango, for example, you want to step with this toe actually active and going out there, no, as opposed to giving it in. So this, this tends to happen a lot, right? Anyways. Okay, so that's about the little toe. And then also explaining along those lines how to operate this whole um, area here on the outside. I think it's often neglected. So let's go back. I'm gonna put the camera back here. Okay, I'm blocking the camera. How does this work? This is my oh, fancy new tripod. Um, <laughs> okay, so sorry, more close-ups for now. Okay, there we go. Um, let's see. So everybody, is everybody wiggling their little toes right now? <laughs> that would be awesome, anyway. <laughs> Okay, so now let's keep talking about the feet. Let's see. Okay, can you see? Yes. Let's move this. So, okay, yes. 
Okay, I think you guys can see stuff, yes. Okay, so let's keep going. Um, I have a massage therapist. He's like kind of like a physical therapist and works as a chiropractor, so he knows a lot. And the other day, he, uh, we found out something, well, I found out something from him about um, relaxing the quads. So I tend to overuse the quads. And so he wanted me to just move my foot outwards, right? So in addition to moving the little toe, have this whole thing move outwards. Um, and I would do it from the quads. So I don't know if you can see from, get more lighting here. Is there better lighting? Um, anyways, let's see. Oh gosh, I'm getting myself into another situation. Anyways, okay, so if you can see, like if I try to move over here, this foot outwards, um, well, now I fixed it. Oh wow, this is amazing. Anyways, my quad would tense up. So say I move this here, I'd be moving the whole outside of the leg. And this tends to make um, dancing kind of tense because you're kind of just landing on a whole tense leg. So the idea was to use this muscle here, which I had never used before and actually it's kind of numb when I touch it because I don't, I don't really use it, um, to move to just do this movement, right? I mean, this is like, I guess, uh, una pavada, parece. Um, seems like just a silly thing to do, but um, actually kind of made a big difference. So now my legs are already different from last week when, when we discovered this thing. So right now, um, I'm using this muscle here to, to do this here, right? And then maybe I could also extend my toe. So uh, there we go. And the left foot is always more stupid, but yeah, it's, it's, it's moving here as opposed to this whole thing here to do this, which is what I started off doing uh, when he asked me to do it. So this also lets me um, articulate more in the feet. Like basically, you know, um, they said the tango is, is dance with the feet, right? You express the music with your feet. And so this really um, I think helps me open up, uh, open up, uh, no, um, activate the, the feet to use them. Anyways, um, the panda already ended, which means that I have way gone, uh, gone over time, but uh, for the, this should be the end of the session. I don't want to uh, make these sessions too long, but since I haven't really done anything except talk today, I'm going to put my shoes on and then move around for a little bit more. So those who want to keep watching, uh, can keep watching and I'll probably keep blabbing anyways, but if not, um, yeah, uh, I'm going to signal that uh, basically I kind of said what I wanted to say, which is talk about the little toe and show this magic trick that the physical therapist um, showed me the other day. So there we go. I'm going to put my shoes back on and just do kind of ochos and a little bit of walking um, for, for one more song. Yeah, there we go. All right. When you're doing it with uh, somebody else, you can think about enjoying the other person's company, um, right?
gosh. Anyways, there you go. <laughs> yeah, so what I've had to do is have it go a little bit open. There, the little toe is open without this being tense here. So here, and the little toe goes. Uh, well, if you're still here, thank you very much for watching. Until next time, maybe next week I'll get onto my strict schedule on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, but if not, let's see. Uh, yeah, hopefully I'll see everybody soon. Bye!